The muscles that extend the knee or straighten the leg in that case, they're your quads, not where you're trying to work. So make sure you're hinging and getting into the hip. By that, if your hips go back to keep your balance, the torso needs to go forward. Then in this position, you have a hip hinge and then the muscles that extend the hips, glutes, primarily the glutes. Hamstrings will help, but make sure you're landing into the hips. So whatever you load first gets worked the most. So if you're doing these movements back and forth and you're just landing into the knee, you're just gonna get a lot of quad engagement. Same thing with that quarter turn. If you land into the knee and stand yourself up, it's quads. Make sure you land into the hips. So to do that, as you land, hips go back, torso goes forward to compensate for that balance. Stand yourself up, then you'll actually get the glutes to fire. gonna run through a quick uh, glute activation then reactivation sequence uh, this is largely for people who are just having trouble getting their glutes to fire as kind of I guess I would say as often as they should or with the intensity of the contraction that should be happening uh, it's just three different movements for people who are having trouble getting their glutes to fire it's best to start these on the ground uh, once you sort of understand the movement and can really get through them without any issues then you can kind of go to the standing versions but asking people to go to a standing single leg position and recruit their glutes something like a muscle that hasn't been firing well i feel like in my experience it's, it's too much to ask all at once so i'll just show the versions on the floor and then i'll quickly run through the standing versions and then i'll run through the uh the reactivation sequence First one, sideline position. You want the hips to be stacked up on top of each other. If you find that sort of bony hip bone right in the front, front of your pubis right here, you want that lined up, you want those two bones lined up on top of each other. Heels come back so they're basically lined up with your butt and the torso. All you're doing from here, keep the feet touching, try to squeeze the butt as you drive that knee up towards the ceiling. Once you get up to your end range, hold for four or five seconds and then come back down. So these are just clamshells. You can also do any of these with a band around the knees too. Uh, it's significantly harder with the band, but it works just fine doing it without a band. Do these until you feel them. That's basically my cue. I wouldn't necessarily prescribe, can you see me? Oh, a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily prescribe a number of reps or sets or time on those. Do them until you feel them. Like it's a body weight movement. It's pretty low activity. Do them and basically until you can't anymore. Do them until failure. Next one, same starting position. So you can transition right into the second one. Straighten that top leg. Now you want a straight line from the shoulder through the hips to the ankle. You don't want to start way out in front here. Still keeping those hips lined up. All you're trying to do is drive back by squeezing the butt and get a little bit of elevation. So you're adding that little bit of abduction to recruit the glute med, TFL, but largely the movement is happening just from squeezing the butt. Cue on these, if as you kick back, your hips are rolling open, you're just getting, that's like false range. You don't need to kick back that far. Keep your hips stacked on top of each other. Only go back as far as you can. Only go back as far as you can, keeping the hips stacked up. Another thing, if you start feeling this in the lower back, a lot of people who don't have good glute activation, this will tend to happen for them or they'll start feeling the hamstrings too much. If you feel in the lower back, that means you haven't braced your abs properly. Try to contract your abs as tight as you can and draw your belly button in towards your stomach before you go into the next rep. Same thing, do a lot of those, do them until you feel them. And on these activation movements, the reason you need that four or five second hold each time is to kind of get that extra recruitment and that extra work just because they haven't been firing, they haven't been working properly. You need the extra time under tension. That's the only reason. Last one, roll onto your stomach. Still working on that same leg. Hands are off to the side, you're facing basically just into the ground. All you're doing from here, brace the abs first, especially in this position, people tend to get a little bit of lower back engagement. Squeeze the butt, try to drive that leg up as high as you can, and a little bit to the outside. Same thing, long isometric hold once you're in your end range. Um, you're adding that little bit of abduction to get some of the other glute muscles firing, glute med, TFL. Primarily a glute max movement though, so don't worry about driving the leg out before you kind of got to that end range. 
work on the glute max first. That's the biggest one to work on. Okay. Like I said, you can also do these uh, with a band around the knees, and you can also do these in a standing version. Uh, I think I've already made a video about standing clamshells, standing banded clamshells. I think I was wearing like khakis that day. Um, so doing these standing is just a slightly harder version and it also helps recruit the other side. So when you're lying on the ground, you're really just working that one side on the leg of the knee you're driving up or the leg that you're driving back behind you. Once you're standing, you're forcing the opposite glute to engage as well. So this is a great movement, but if people are having trouble or if people don't have good balance, like don't challenge people's balance while you're trying to get glute activation. Like get them down on the ground, work on the activation first, then sort of move to the more advanced movements. Move to movements. I love when I say stuff like that. All right, so if you have a band around the knees or without it, either one's fine. Uh, standing version, get yourself next to the wall just to cue you to keep the torso tall and upright. Drive the knee up and to the outside. That was a bad first example. You still hold for four seconds up top and then come back down. Just make sure the toe isn't pointing up towards the ceiling. Keep the toe neutral. Or, that was probably hard to see. Don't let the toe turn up towards the ceiling. Keep it neutral. There we go. Uh, the other version, pretty much the same thing. Uh, so like when you're side lying and lying on the floor, that straight leg extension, those are slightly different movements. Standing, it's basically the same movement. So from here, band around the knees, optional. Drive that leg back, try to squeeze the butt as much as you can. A Little bit to the outside, hold for four or five seconds, back to your starting position. Again, on that one, instead of like on the clamshells, you're worried about leaning the torso to the outside. As you kick the leg back behind you, you're worried about overextending, leaning the torso forward. So after you run through that, you can either go right into a reactivation sequence or you can continue warm up, kind of whatever you were doing, keep stretching out, but make sure you go into some sort of reactivation sequence. I tend to do that in a more fluid manner, a few different options for you. Uh, lateral bounds with a pause, drive yourself up and across, make sure you land into a balanced position, drive up the opposite knee as high as you can, that's gonna help force the glutes to engage. Landing into that single leg, that's gonna help the glute engage. Drive yourself back and across. If you land into a bent leg position, that's fine. Just make sure you end up locking out. Because if you're bent in the leg, you're not engaged as much as you should. Drive yourself up. Another good one, bound or just like some sort of quarter turn. From here, if Peel's balance isn't great, make it more of a step. Come into a balanced position and work yourself back and forth that way. Uh, another one you can do if people don't have great balance. Very shallow single leg squat. So from here, make sure you load into the hips. Squeeze the butt as you come back to the top. Whoop, too much. Load into the hip, squeeze the butt as you come to the top, into the hip, up to the top. You can just do a lot of those mid on each leg. Something to note about any of these reactivation sequences. So something to note about any of these reactivation sequences is understanding the relationship of where you're loading, whether you're loading into the hip or you're loading into the knee. I'll give this example. So from here, I can keep my torso totally tall and upright and still lower myself down just by bending into the knee. This is not really a hip hinge movement. This is just a knee bend movement. So if I'm doing those shallow squats, or I'm standing myself up out of a quarter turn, but I landed into my knee. The problem with that is if you're into the knee, the muscles that extend the knee or straighten the leg in that case, they're your quads, not where you're trying to work. So make sure you're hinging and getting into the hip. By that, if your hips go back to keep your balance, the torso needs to go forward. Then in this position, you have a hip hinge and then the muscles that extend the hips Glutes, primarily the glutes. Hamstrings will help, but make sure you're landing into the hips. So whatever you load first gets worked the most. So if you're doing these movements back and forth and you're just landing into the knee, you're just gonna get a lot of quad engagement. Same thing with that quarter turn. If you land into the knee and stand yourself up, it's quads. Make sure you land into the hips. So to do that, as you land, hips go back, torso goes forward to compensate for that balance. Stand yourself up then you'll actually get the glutes to fire.